Well, hi guys. We're back for our second part of the math series. Math 101 and part 2. Um, we're going to go over some other stuff. Uh, I, I do have a little disclaimer about all this. This is not a pure math course. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm just not going to go over that you would normally get in a regular math course uh, primarily because what I'm going over is stuff that I feel that would be necessary for you to help you with electronics math and dealing with the math that's actually in electronics um, having pure math th there would be stuff in it that you probably would never need nor use but that being said, uh, there will be some stuff that will seem like, um, well, not at the time understanding why you need it. But it, it I feel, is necessary. So if, for the math whizzes out there that sees I'm skipping over stuff, that's the reason why. Uh, it's not going to be extraordinarily uh, important in the long run and also when I get into theory that deals with math that deals more in depth of, of the circuit operations and uh, and the design and the theory behind that design and stuff of circuits so anyway the first thing I wanted to go over was basically the problem from last time uh, there was a couple people that got the right answer on that, and I applaud them for that. Uh, so, and this problem actually makes use of some of the stuff that we're going to discuss today. So anyway, uh, we'll go over the problem, and uh, I'll run it out for you. So, we're going to let X equal his money okay that's our unknown we don't know how much money you start out with so we'll let X be that so we know from the problem that he goes to the first store and he spends one half that money so one half X and then a half a cent more now I'll go over what I'm doing here once it's done but we put one half, a minus one half, put parentheses around it. That's the first store. Now to continue with the problem, he goes to the second store and he spends half of his remainder money. So we put a half in front of this. Half of this is what he spent at the second store and a half a cent. Then he goes to the third store and he spends half of that and a half a cent. And then he's left over with two cents. There's the full setup problem right there. Now, the reason for the minus signs. I know the problem said that he spent half of his money and a half a cent more. And you would think that that means plus. But the word spend means take away. So you have to look at words and word problems. Now, the reason why I didn't put a half here, which I could have, but then if I'd done that, then it would have been a half, one half minus one half x plus one half. And I could have done that and continue with the negatives and negatives. But then also I would have to make a negative two, and the reason is is because it's a leftover. It's what's left from the original money, so it's taken away from that money. If I want to keep a positive here, then I have to change my signs throughout. So then I go with a positive one half x minus one half. Otherwise, it'd be minus one half x plus one half. You can do it either way. In order to keep from getting a negative answer at the end, then you would have to multiply through with a negative one to get your answer to be a positive answer at the end. 
this way it gives a positive answer but the thing is this minus one half comes from the word spend he spent he gave away it took away from the original total now we work the problem from last time we we talked about the order of operations and the top order the top one the first thing you do is what's inside parentheses well when you got what they call nested parentheses in other words you got more than one set of parentheses you go to the deepest one first and then you work out so we'll do that and I'm going to show you how I've got some problems for you and I also will put on some other problems for you to practice with play with and stuff I'm gonna work this problem through the way I want you to work those problems okay by steps so the first thing we're going to do we have a nested set of parentheses so we have to work with this what's inside here okay well there's nothing I can do in here but I do have a one half out in front that with nothing there means simply that I take this times everything that's inside the parentheses it's called the distributive rule we went over these properties just a little bit so we write the entire problem out again but this time we're going to distribute this one half times this one half x times the negative one half so we'll get rid of this we end up with one fourth x multiplying fractions you just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators x minus keep the sign one half times one half is one fourth minus one half for over here then minus one half equals two now I gotta do what's inside this parentheses well when you add fractions you know and like I say I'm not really going to go deep into um, basic math or anything but I gotta change I gotta look for the lowest common denominator so I'll change this to force so in order to do that you know I have to multiply the top by two and the bottom by two and then I'll go ahead and combine these two so then I'll have one half times one fourth x minus two fourths minus one fourth gives me minus three fourths minus one half equals two now I run through the same thing again just what I did here do here get rid of the parentheses and run, work the problem out so one half times one fourth is one eighth x minus this times this is three eighths minus one half equals two. Now, again, combine these two. I have changes to eighths. To do that, multiply both sides, both the top and bottom, by four, and then combine. So I have one half or one eighth x minus. Well, we got four eighths minus three-eighths gives us minus seven-eighths equals two still don't have our answer yet well one thing I might want to do is get rid of the eights in order to do that what I need to do is multiply both sides of this equation by eight whatever I do on this side I have to do on this side to keep it equal I can multiply it times a billion it wouldn't make any difference as long as I do on both sides but we want to get rid of the 8 so I multiply both sides by 8 and what that does is when I distribute that through you'll have 8 over 8 the 8's will actually cancel because 8 over 8 is nothing but 1 that gives me an x 8 times 7 over 8 the eights will cancel again so I cancel them out minus seven eight times two is sixteen still don't have an answer 
I need x by itself. So in this time, I want to get rid of the 7. To get rid of the 7, I have to add a 7 to it. That would be the easiest way. I got negative 7, I add a 7, makes it 0. So I'll take 7 plus this, but then I have to do the same thing on the other side. When I do that, 7, 7 minus 7 is 0, so that gives me x. 16 plus 7, 23. And that is our answer. 23 cents. And it will be up to you if you want to. You can actually work the problem backwards. Plug in 23 where the X's are. I just do it in the very top one and work the problem out. You will see that it works out and leaves you with two left over. There's last week's problem. Now we move on to what some of the stuff we did in here and what we call it and why we did it. Okay. And uh, a little side note. I have lecture notes. Otherwise I can't keep track of what's going on. Plus I won't be able to keep track of what's going on from week to week. This way I've got a record of what I taught before um, and what I went over and it also keeps me basically on the straight and narrow uh, otherwise I might go off on a tangent so anyway we have lecture notes <laughs> and the very top one was do last week's problem so this keeps me honest um, so I don't get off on some tangent or miss something I want to teach or something. So the very first thing on here after doing last week's problem says like terms combining. Well, What, what does that mean? <clears throat> As in the original the problem I did last week there were different stuff in there we call terms. You had the one half x to start out with so you had the x terms in there, you had just regular numbers like the minus one half, all the minus one halves. Those are terms and sometimes you get a problem that can be like that, that's complex, that it would be much easier to solve or even work out when the problem is simpler. Well, one way of simplifying is called combining like terms. You look for terms that are alike. So terms can be uh, 3xy. That's a term. Another one that could be similar to it would be, say, minus 7xy. These two terms are the same. They're like. The numbers may be different, but the x and the y, the variables, are the same. So I can combine those and get a negative 4xy. Uh, some others would be like 3a squared b and 8a squared b. These guys are like terms. Again, the numbers may not be the same but the a squared b and a squared b are same so they're like I can combine those and since there's no sign there we assume plus so I can combine those to give me 11 a squared b numbers themselves are terms and they're alike the value may not be the same, but they have no variables, no nothing. So a minus 3 and a plus 5, or just 5. If you don't see a sign in front of it, it just means plus, and that's a 5. I'm, I write things awful fast. I could combine those and get 2, but those are like terms. They may be a different value, but there's nothing else with them, so they're just what we call constants. So they're like terms. 
I can combine them and you get two. Now an example of this is say 5x minus oh, 2y minus 8x plus 7y now to combine these I look for the like terms well first of all I got x's so I can combine those so I'd have the if I combine those I take 5x minus 8x the signs always stay with the term so a negative sign stays with this term that's negative 8x that's all one term negative 2y all one term plus 7y all one term and when you got a number out front you don't have to put the plus sign so it's just assumed that it's positive then since there's nothing there so it would be a plus 5x but it, it all stays the same the sign always goes with the term so 5x minus 8x would give me 8, or 8, yeah, right, that, that works, <clears throat> minus 3x. Now, the other two terms is my y's, minus 2y plus 7y. I algebraically add those together, or just add them together, a negative 2y plus a 7y is going to be plus 5y. Now, you can write it out this way. Standard practice is follow alphabetical order. X comes before Y in the alphabet. So generally the X will be before the Y. It could be A, B. It could be, you know, any other N or, or M and N any basic letters but you generally follow alphabetical order but you could turn this around this equals the same thing as 5y minus 3x they're the same thing and what I kinda of went over that in the first one and uh, first video if you actually would plug a number into these say x and y both equal 1 then you have minus 3 plus 5 on one side equals 5 minus 3. Both sides are 2. So they, you, can, you can write it either way, but standard practice is to follow alphabetic order when you've got more than one variable. Now another example would be 8x squared minus 3x plus 7 minus 2x squared plus 4x minus oh, 3 okay now we got more terms we have x squares we have x and we have just straight constants or numbers so we look for the like terms and we combine them. We have an 8x squared here and we have a minus 2x squared there. Combine those two we end up with 6x squared. Okay those guys are out. And when you got a lengthy problem it's nice just to go ahead and cross out the ones you already combined. That way you don't come back and maybe confuse yourself. Now we've got a minus 3x and a plus 4x. Combine those we end up with a plus 1x and since it's just a 1 we don't have to show the 1 we can just go plus x. It just assume there's a 1 in front there. All that's left plus 7 minus 3 combine those gives us plus 4. And that's your answer. That's as simple as it can go. Now another one that, and that's what was called combining like terms. Another method, another rule, or another thing to do 
is what they call distributing following the distributive property which we kind of covered before and we talked about before okay on distributing distributive property is A you got A times the quantity when I say quantity I mean what's inside the parentheses that equals and when you distribute you just multiply the A through when a, a, anything is right in front of parentheses, it means times. So that's equals AB plus AC. That's distributive property. That's a distributing rule. So an example of that would be take 4 times quantity of 2x minus 7. Now we just distribute through 4 times 2x is 8x 4 times 7 minus 28 and we're good to go. Another one would be minus 7 times 5x minus 6 Now we have a negative sign. It follows this 7. The sign stays with the term. So now we distribute through. Minus 7 times 5x is minus 35x. Minus 7 times minus 6. A negative times a negative is a positive. So it's plus 42. And one last one would be, example would be, say minus 4x minus 5y oh, plus 6. Now I've got a negative in front of here. That's the same thing as saying, since there's nothing there, it shows it, we know it as a 1. So we assume there's a 1 there. So... It's like a negative 1. So we distribute through, we're basically going to distribute through the negative sign. So negative 1 times 4x is negative 4x. Unlike signs, negative times positive gives us a negative. Now we have a negative times a negative gives us a positive. Negative times a positive, unlike signs, gives us a negative. And that's the answer. And that's about as far as I'm probably going to go on the, I'm running out of time, so it's probably as far as I'm going to go with examples, that pretty much gets it. Um, I might do one more, something that's a little more complex, um, kind of combining some of the rules. Oh, 2x minus 7. All right. Now, we'll take the first part, run it through. So 4 times 3x gives us 12x. 4 times minus 8, minus 32. A negative times 2x gives us negative 2x. A negative times a negative 7, positive 7. We're not done yet. Now we've got to combine our terms. Are like terms. We have a, a 2x and a 12x. We combine those. Gives us a 10x. That is positive and a negative. We have a 32 and a 7. And we combine those. That's going to give us a negative um, 25. And now we're done. Our answer. So we've done both rules. We distributed through, then combined. Now, for some problems for next week, real quick, I'll put write these down real quick, and, um, and I'll leave it on here until pretty much it runs out of time. So when it shuts off, 
That'll be the end of the video. So thanks for watching everything. You guys can stop it. I will be posting these problems as well as some other problems that you can play with if you want. And uh, and then I'll later um, post the answers in a day or two. So anyway, R minus 9 plus 10. 9N minus 1 plus N plus 4 minus 8 times quantity X minus 4 minus quantity minus 5 plus 9A 2N times quantity of minus 10 in plus 5 minus 7 quantity 6 minus 10 in. Now you can pause it here, write them down if you want. I'll leave it on here for a little bit so you can do that. Uh, there's, and I'll talk a little bit about what we'll probably go over, we're going to start linear equations uh, on the next one. Um, in other words, working actually with equations. Where all this is heading to is basically you've seen some math formulas for electronics. With, with learning how to do all this and work with equations and work with all this and solving them, you'll be able to take those problems those formulas and solve for any one of the variables that's in it. Say like uh, uh, x sub l equals 2 pi times frequency times l or f l. Well maybe you already know what you want for x sub l and you've got an inductor so you know l but now you need to find the frequency. You can rearrange that to get the frequency or maybe you got the frequency and and you know X is bell, you need to find an inductor for it. You can rearrange the problem and solve for the L, the inductor. So that's where all this is heading and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing because those formulas are never wrote out where they're perfect. You know, for what you want to do. They're wrote out for basic what they are and uh, that may not be what you're looking for and most likely won't be what you're looking for. You're looking for one of the other variables so you need to be able to rearrange the formula and solve for that other variable. Not yet sure where I'm at on theory. I don't know what I'm going to be teaching on that on the the non-math theory but we'll I'll figure out something. It'll be up in a day or two. Plus uh, the signal tracer I'll be doing a video on it either later today and get, trying to get it up uh, or tomorrow. So, I'll show you where I'm at on it and stuff. It's been rather interesting. So, I guess until next time, guys, um, I got a bunch, I got a few new subscribers. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, hopefully, I can keep it interesting for you and the rest of you. Um, I'm still working on. Uh, trying to get back and get get a few at least a few of you guys answered on your replies Phil you know you came in there and watched a whole bunch of videos and left me a bunch of comments as always really nice comments I appreciate them um, anyway uh, and a lot of uh, you guys are always real kind and so um, I find sometimes as I look at the comments comments and see what you're asking and I'd rather you know I just do videos so sometimes that's just an answer to some of your comments so anyway if you have any questions on this ask and we'll definitely go over it again